Hey guys, my name is Shai, and today I'm doing a pick a deck reading all about how can you liberate yourself. I am recording this during the Venus retrograde in Capricorn, and for me uh, and everybody I see around me in my human life, this theme of liberating yourself from self-repression <laughs> has been like a nearly constant daily thing I'm seeing everywhere. So I wanted to do a reading specifically on this. Um, yeah, just knowing that the, the theme here is self-repression, right? There's all different types of oppression and repression and whatever, but this is specifically about self-repression and how can you liberate yourself from it. It's like an entirely self-focused internal energy. So go ahead and pick your deck. We got the Mystic Mondays, uh, the Threads of Fate, the Weaver Tarot, and the Wildwood Tarot. Hello and welcome to everybody who picked Mystic Mondays. Mystic Mondays. I can't quite put my finger on the vibe I'm getting off of this, but it, it feels like anxiety in my heart. <laughs> yeah, and like almost like it's crawling up into, up into my chest, a little bit like acid reflux. <laughs> um, so let's just, let's see what that, that is all about. How can you guys liberate yourself from self-repression? Okay, okay, Hanged Woman, first card out. So I think this process has already started for you, but maybe you don't, it doesn't feel like it has, right? It's like you, you've, you've acknowledged that there is some kind of situation or issue or problem and you are ready to acknowledge that this thing is inside of you somehow some way maybe before you've been in denial about it and maybe before you know like maybe when you were a teenager you used to think that the problem was your parents or that the problem was society or that the problem was your job or this this or that um, I know that's how I used to be you know when I was younger um, constantly thinking the problem was outside of myself and constantly thinking as soon as I got to a certain age um, or level of accomplishment that all my problems would go away but then of course I had to realize that of course it's all inside right it's all inside if I want to change my life I need to change m my inner landscape right so that seems like where you guys are at if And that is huge, okay? That is huge. The fact that you're, you're at this point where you feel like, you, 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 like you've acknowledged that you want to go inward to make this change inside of yourself, that is half the battle. It, it might feel like you're just starting or you might feel like you've just taken 10 giant steps backwards. But no, the fact that you were here, the fact that you synchronized with this video and that you're look, looking inward and making like the choice to do this work and to make this change, that is so huge and you should give yourself a massive pat on the back <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like what your thing is right it doesn't matter what the thing is what matters is that here you are here you are at your pivot moment where this is where it all changes this is where the change begins you know it's maybe going to be a while before you see the change manifest outside of yourself in your external reality but it's already happening inside um okay so let's get more of this ace of pentacles <laughs> New start coming. And the world. Wow. Okay, but this doesn't tell me anything about <laughs> like what 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 you need to release. Like what is the problem? Um This tells me that you're at your pivot point, you're looking inwards, that you're getting ready, you're reaching out for your new world, right? You're reaching out for the new world. Look at this golden light in the palm of your hand and literally with the world card, this card almost never comes up. When the world card comes out, it's a big deal because it means that you're closing out a massive cycle and it's, I mean, it could reflect in like leaving a religion, leaving a job getting a divorce or getting married or buying a house, it can reflect in those physical ways, especially you get this Ace of Pentacles. So this is going to re reflect, whatever change you're making is going to reflect in your physical reality. Absolutely, because of the Ace of Pentacles in the world, That's this is all this earth energy coming, like hitting, hitting rock bottom and then bouncing back, 
is 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 the the vibe I get here. Hitting rock, bo rock bottom and bouncing back. And don't focus on the rock bottom. Focus on the fact that you're heading into your whole new world. But I want to know like <laughs> what what your your deal is. Like what what is the thing? Of course, it's different for everybody, but there should be a general vibe here. What is the thing that you've been holding inside? What toxic energy is inside of you that you have been like how have you been repressing yourself right how have you been repressing yourself okay i keep finding myself looking at this deck the pacific northwest tarot apparently i'm supposed to grab this one <laughs> and let's find out what in what fashion have you been repressing yourself what is the nature of your self-repression there we go what is the nature of your self-repression page of pentacles you felt small you were keeping yourself small and you weren't you, you were literally stopping yourself from reaching out to your new world like look, look at the how these two cards play together this little chipmunk here is looking up at the ace of pentacles page of pentacles and ace of pentacles are pretty similar energy um here you are looking up at your new world you're looking up at your ace of pentacles like here it is right you've been looking up at it Okay, but you weren't reaching for it. You weren't reaching for it. Look, this, this chipmunk is just looking. The chipmunk is not reaching, but you're coming out of that because here you are reaching. Here you are reaching. So you were not, you were playing so small. You were keeping yourself small and you kept telling yourself that you're too small, that you can't do it, that it's too hard, it's too tough, that you don't have the talents, that you don't have the skills. You guys were just nine of swords. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, okay? Exactly, exactly nine of swords. Um, like your own mind was attacking you, being attacked by your own thoughts, your like toxic thoughts, guys, toxic, toxic thoughts. And uh, it, almost like, you know, maybe you've had stretches in your life where you literally couldn't get a moment's peace because of your inner monologue. This is like an inner critic your inner critic was out of control, <laughs> um, telling you mean and horrible and untrue things about yourself, right? And and it's like there was this background noise in your mind telling you all these lies, telling you that you were small, telling you that you can't do it. And it, it was just keeping you down like so hard. It was keeping you small. It was like not letting you grow. It was keeping you almost in a childlike state. This page of pentacles is like a youthful energy, but it doesn't. it's not about how old you are or how successful you've been in some life areas, but it's like it was like keeping your your mind small. It was keeping your perspective small, okay? It was like it was almost like your world had shrunk down and you didn't think it could ever expand, right? Like like your world was had shrunk right down, shrunk way down. Um, I think even for a couple of you, you know, if anyone's watching this, if you've had like a serious like illness, mental or physical, or just like absolutely crazy life circumstances that have like compacted your life down to like, you know, maybe just the clothes on your back even, right? Or, you know, just down to something so small. It's if your life has been has shrunk, it's because your your perspective had shrunk. And it's not that you guys are closed minded or that you don't have a huge imagination. It's that your perspective for what you believed you could do was small, you might have looked at the world and go, wow, other people can do all these things. Right? Other people can be self-employed other people can own their own business other people can go to college other people can become doctors of anything right get a phd other people can do this other people can travel other people can have love you thought it was for everybody else but no you can have it too all of those lies you have to like right now acknowledge that the inner critic right those thoughts in your head and if they have for some of you the the inner critic voice has manifested with people around you right if you've ever had people tell you that you can't or that you're too small or that you're too dumb or that whatever whatever the thing is when people tell you when people tell you things that keep you small you have to know that those are lies like they're, they're literally just the manifestation of this really nasty frequency that, that that's been coming at you and that you've been picking up on so but that's fine <laughs> because that has been all part of your journey and here you are like expunging yourself of that Honestly, guys, this um, this is like Draco energy, okay? It's funny that this comes up because I don't... I have not really talked about the Draconians on my channel um, because I didn't really have any personal... 
like experience with that energy or so I thought I actually just recently like just this week was able to really identify some draconian energy in some people that I know and finally able to like really understand the kind of essence of the low frequency draconian energies and um I know this isn't going to resonate for everybody, but for the for those of you who are, are into this kind of star stuff, I, I'm going to talk about this because I know there's going to be somebody watching it. So it, this, it's like this draconian frequency has been like wheedling itself into your consciousness and lying to you, okay? It lies to you because the there are higher frequencies and benevolent frequencies of draconian energy. We just tend to be more familiar with the low frequencies of it, and that's what we're dealing with on Earth, the low frequencies of draconian energy. There are benevolent draconians, there are absolutely positive and like light-based aspects to draconian energy, but that's a story for another day. Right now, it's the low frequency that is relevant right now. The low frequency of draco energy is like it it will it will do literally whatever it can to manipulate to, to to manipulate you it will manipulate you in literally whatever way is necessarily like it it will do anything it will say anything it will be anything to to get power over you to keep you small that that's like you know it doesn't matter if we're talking about the abstract frequency or uh, like a person who happens to have like significant draco heritage or happens to just be like embodying a bunch of draconian energy they will do literally whatever it takes to constantly stay on top just constantly and, and it's like that's what the draco energy like calibrates to in literally every moment of its existence when it's in a low frequency it's just constantly trying to be okay how do i spin this moment how do i spin the conversation how do i spin the facts how do i spin the feelings how do i spin 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 constantly spinning so that they can be on top and keep you small so for some of you, you might have had this, you know, draconian, or if you know the whole, if the whole uh, draconian thing doesn't resonate, just just go with, you know, toxic, bad, negative energy, right? It's all the same shit. Um, you know, that could have manifested outside of you, or you know, you could be, you could be like having tuned into that radio station, right? If it's if it's if this is all an internal thing, you've tuned into the radio station, and you've been like listening to this negative draconian radio station and it's been playing in your head, it's been playing in your consciousness, keeping you small. But now you are expunging yourself of that. It, it's going away. That's why you're in this hanged man position. You're in the hanged man position. So I get a little bit of a tower moment vibe off of this, but not for everybody because this doesn't need to be a big thing. Um, you know, the, this hanged man, um, this going inward, this finding the new perspective, I really get the feeling that something has been lost, right? You've been like disinvesting yourself. Something has been going away. That's why for some of you, this might feel like a tower moment. You know, if you've, um, if, if your higher self basically decided that like you were so entrenched in this energy that you needed something severe to happen to shake things up, to get you out of the energy, then that's why this has happened, right? If you've lost a job, if you've had to move, if you've been through a divorce or like whatever has been happening, man, can you hear how my throat is getting weird? Um, that's a uh, that's you guys that's your energy so somebody watching this has like this is all happening to you to unblock your throat chakra okay it's like your throat chakra needs needs some liberation you need to speak you need to be who you truly are you need to show up in your as your most authentic self in every moment so whatever you guys are doing in this hanged man energy whether it's um like a like a crisis you, you're experiencing or if you're just in this really slow dull like dark night of the soul kind of space or, you know, if, even if you're just, like, feeling kind of bleh, right? I, I really feel like for this group, the, the spectrum for how serious this is could be anywhere from somebody who, like, just had five different life catastrophes happen at once to somebody who's just been kind of, like, sitting on the couch for, for too long, right? This could be a whole, a whole spectrum. So fit yourself into this hanged man energy. But this is all happening to orient you to a new perspective. That is literally what's happening right now. You are orienting yourself to your new perspective, and your new perspective basically is expanded, right? Expanded perspective of who you are, right? Unblock your throat. Find out who you really are. Like, you might, some of you might really need to for some of you, it's more of expressing who you really are. For others of you, you might not even really know who you are and you're going to be uncovering more aspects of yourself that have been like obliterated by that negative energy, right? So expanding, expanding. Everything that's happening to you right now is happening to expand your perspective of what you think is possible from yourself. So this is going to be like way dragged into your, like out of your comfort zone, right? 
um, you know, that's like that anxiety I felt in my heart when I first um, picked this up, that Nine of Swords energy. Um, you know, if you're being forced to do something like move or if you're getting getting a new job and you're really like you don't feel like you can pull it off, right? Um, if you're starting school and you're really uh, intimidated by it or if like you're in some kind of legal battle and that's really not your thing, right? Whatever it is, you're being deliberately pulled out of your comfort zone so that you can expand yourself, right? When, um, like I can really relate to this whole journey because my whole life I was in this like really small, really, really, really small place and you know, several things in my life had to happen to me that made me realize that, oh, I could go out into the world, I could do all these things, um, I could survive that situation, oh really, like it's okay, like I can't, I can do it, I can do it. But I, I would never have known that if I hadn't have been pushed into those really uncomfortable experiences, right? They expand you. So you are being expanded, expanded, and then you're going to be like, look at this card the world but it's also that's like a picture of an atom doesn't it look like an atom to you so this is um man i keep getting that that feeling of almost like shrinking so small shrinking so small shrinking so small hitting rock bottom and then boom exploding it's almost like you're contracting in on yourself to, so hard that you are then going to explode as if your life is going to have a big bang moment, right? Like like you're compacting, you're compacting, you're shrinking, but you can only shrink and become so small before you explode. So after you guys have your, your kind of bounce back moment when, when you finally contract so small and then explode, this is like rap, this feels like rapid, rapid expansion first in your perspective and your consciousness and your understanding of that you really can do it, right? You guys might really benefit from affirmations, you know, just saying like, I can, I can do it. I am larger than life, I am powerful. Whatever makes you feel pumped up, right? Like pump yourself up, like get yourself pumped up every morning, listen to music that pumps you up, wear clothes that makes you feel, that make that, that just make you feel good, right? Whatever the clothes are, just feel good in them. Do things that make yourself feel large and powerful and good and great and like expansive and like an explorer, like an adventurer, right? Um, you guys have often, I think, just really like struggled with like feeling intimidated right feeling like you can't do things um so you know remember that like you are here you are on earth <laughs> that is crazy that you came here right you are like enormous and powerful and cosmic and divine and there is nothing that you can't do so <laughs> just talk like pump yourself up pump yourself up every day this is all about making you feel like liberating yourself from feeling small right you 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 are here to remember how huge and massive and powerful and awesome that you really are so that then you can go off and live the life that reflects that so that then your new reality that you're grasping that you're putting it reaching out remember and all you got to do here is reach out for it right just reach out put your hand out right before you've been you've been closing back you've been like pulling your hands back the universe can't give you anything if your hands are closed right if you have a fist because you've shrunken in on yourself and like it's like I, I uh, my whole body just kind of wants to curl in on itself you guys have shrunk in on yourselves and don't beat yourself up about that you have had many lifetimes of experiences that were designed to make you shrink on yourself right that was that was the soul's journey you chose to work through on earth here but now it is time to expand it is time to open your hands right open your hands i'm getting massive massive shivers there is so much for you to receive if you just open your hands and then reach out right then the universe will put this golden light in your hand and it will manifest your ace of pentacles your new world and I know how hard it is like the first time, like reaching out for that first time because you think I've never received anything before. But once you start reaching out and just just keep, just remember that you are safe. It is safe to open your hands. It is safe to receive. Just relax, like relax. Um, if you have trouble relaxing mentally, start with relaxing your body, right? Take a hot bath, get like get like a heating pad, a hot water bottle, like get a massage, like anything, anything to do that can, can relax your muscles because that can train then then train your mind right like go through your hands relax your hands relax your arms relax your jaw then try to relax your mind right because you can't receive if you're all tensed up and closed up you need to open up to receive and there is like so much coming for you and <laughs> once you receive the first thing then you receive it with so much gratitude and then open your hands again and say i'm ready to receive more <laughs> i deserve more i am open to receive and that's all you need to do and you will you will because your whole cycle is closing out and your new world is here so <sighs> i love you guys bye hello and welcome to everybody who chose the weaver tarot 
Um, as you might be able to hear, I'm already having throat problems. Um, I was having throat problems in the first deck too. <laughs> so throat chakra coming up for at least, you know, a good chunk of you. I mean, which is not surprising if we're asking like, how are we, how are we repressing ourselves and how can we liberate ourselves, right? Of course the throat <laughs> is gonna come up, right? Man, I need to get a drink. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay, I actually just had to pause the camera to like cough a bunch. This is way worse than the first deck. <laughs> you, you guys, um, yeah, like throat chakra. Damn. So, something to think about for the throat chakra in terms of how have you been repressing yourself and how can you liberate yourself, more importantly? Because we want to focus more on what can we do to liberate ourselves, right? Rather than like, what did we do in the past that got us here? Um, if the throat chakra isn't just about speaking your truth and it isn't just about communication although it is all of those things um it is also about being who you truly truly are knowing who you truly truly are and being who you truly are in your most authentic way in every single moment in every moment um no matter what like no matter what is happening around you like no matter what is happening around you Okay? And no matter what other people might think, no matter what other people are doing or saying, like literally to be like the pure distillation of yourself in every single moment and to use that pure distillation of your soul, use that as your compass for literally everything that you do in every single second of every single day. <laughs> um, so... If you're, you know, you got this and, and I said throat chakra and you were like, nah, you know, I'm pretty like outspoken. I'm, I, I always speak my truth. I know who I am. Um, I've already worked on my throat chakra a lot. I think for you guys, this is like a higher level of throat chakra work. This is a higher level of self liberation. You guys are like, you, you've already been through the whole thing of, you know, learning to be yourself and, you know, learning to express yourself to others. It's like, you're already like pretty solid and good on that. But the reason this is like, was hitting like my physical throat so hard is because this is, this is like a higher level. You, you guys are leveling up your throat chakra. Yeah. Okay. This is actually about a throat chakra upgrade. Um, <laughs> and I have a few things to say about the throat chakra upgrade. Um, because I've, I've been through this so much. It's, you know, really funny. If you want to if you want, if someone were to watch like all of my videos that I've made up to this point, it's been like, like two years of a throat chakra unblocking journey. That's what I've been doing on YouTube, right? Um, so I have a lot of opinions um, and experience about this. So I love, 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 love doing and receiving different types of energy work, right? Um, a lot of it I do, you know, I listen, I listen to a video or an mp3 or something and somebody walks me through a meditation and that's typically how I do energy work. Um, and I love it. However, <laughs> for the throat chakra, I have found that the best way to work on your throat energy is to actually do something in the physical, to actually go out and communicate, to actually go out and put yourself out there in a new way. You know, for me, the most profound things I have ever done to um, like upgrade and click to clear and upgrade my throat chakra are things like, um, you know, actually socializing. Cause for me, I, I never socialize. Um, so literally talking to somebody, um, especially talking to somebody in a really authentic way about like, you know, being a star seed or something, or, you know, like a personal, having a personal conversation with somebody massively healing to my throat chakra, going up, putting my face on YouTube and talking about like really crazy fringe shit that I talk about on this channel, right? Massively unblocking and healing and upgrading to my throat chakra. So before I even get to these cards, the first thing I would just recommend if you guys are like really serious about like grounding this throat chakra upgrade into your physical vessel is to do all of your energy work that you like to do. That's all wonderful and perfect but also like really go out and actually do something, <laughs> go out and physically do something. Cause you, you might find that, um, that will, that will actually make a bigger, it will be like more impactful as energy work than doing energy work because you'll be actually doing the energy work in your human body and doing it like completely 
and meshed with your entire experience. So yeah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, you know, you don't need to put your face on YouTube and talk about crazy things. It's like, whatever it is for you, right? Whatever it is for you. Can you, um, like make, like call somebody up, have a phone call. Like it, it all depends on like what your specific throat chakra thing is, but there is like a, I feel, I feel really, really called here. Um, to like emphasize this. This is like being massively emphasized. Somebody's guides like really want you to get up and do something, something that will, something involving communication, something involving talking to others, um, speaking your truth, being who you truly are, showing up who you truly are, like in a way that actually involves other people, which is like scary, right? It's like, it's scary, but that's, that's why you guys are leveling up. You're leveling up. You're in a higher level of throat chakra work here and it's going to require actually doing something in the physical different for everybody it can be basically anything um but yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna have to put a pin in that because i could uh repeat that forever and when i get into these loops when i when i'm doing a reading if i start looping a message over and over and over it's because um like someone's guides are really emphasizing that to me and if i keep looping it that means that one of you listening hasn't like gotten the message right but this is i have to i have to move on so Get up and go out and talk and be yourself, basically. <laughs> Let's get some more cards. Conqueror of Swords. So the Knight of Swords, that's... <laughs> oh my god, this could this be any more hilarious to me? The, the Knight of Swords, this is air energy, this is throat energy, this is communication, this is going out and communicating. This is literally getting up off your, off your ass, going outside into the world and talking to somebody. Like now like quickly <laughs> um i don't know i don't know like what this is but there is such an energy of urgency here and like i was saying like somebody's really emphasizing this this is this knight of swords is so fast so urgent there's an urgency here i don't know if somebody watching this has to like has some kind of communication that is urgent for you to do <laughs> um something urgent for you to do something urgent for you to communicate. I don't I don't like saying that something is urgent or that you need to get up and do something now because I'm a very slow moving person and I don't like to do anything under like under a time limit. <laughs> um and I I always feel that, you know, there are no missed chances. You can take as much time as you want to do anything. So if I say that there's like a a little bit of urgency here, it's because I'm really strongly feeling it. And I don't mean to like freak anybody out or anything. Um it's just that that's how much this, this message is being emphasized. Go out and communicate because you have not been communicating something. You have not been your authentic self in the way that you could, right? It's like you have done those things to an extent, but it's time to like massively expand that extent. Judgment. <laughs> wow. Okay. So it is time to step up, like massively step up, right? This is another throw chakra card. This is judgment. This is <laughs> like judgment day. A lot of the time this card is depicted with, you know, Archangel Gabriel blowing his horn, the horn that wakes the sleepers. It is time for you to wake up and you guys are already very much awake. So if for you guys to wake up, it's like you're waking up out of another layer of the dream. Have you all seen Inception, right? When they wake up out of different layers of the dream, you're waking up out of a whole nother layer. It's like, yes, you've already woken up once. Maybe you've already woken up 10 times, but guess what? There's an 11th layer. There's an 11th layer of the dream and you're popping up out of that. And you're not, and, and this is not just for you. That's why this is urgent, okay? This is like a call to light workers to like wake up and step up. That's what this is. That's the, the, that, that's That's why I've been like, you know, feeling this like this you're watching this you are a light worker maybe you don't think of yourself as a light worker but <laughs> this this is this is it this is like your light worker activation and as some of you already know your light workers and you've already been doing your work for maybe years maybe decades right um but <sighs> time to step it up again like if you you know, maybe you do like readings for somebody right you do healing you do readings you do massage like whatever it is that you do maybe already doing that, but like, this is like a, a call to like finally start your business, right? Or take your business to the next level to really to start taking things seriously. Or, you know, it's uh, time to start that YouTube channel or that blog or that Instagram page or like wh whatever, like whatever your thing is, it's time to like do it. And it's because you are waking up and it, you are here to wake others up. You are here to wake others up. 
That's why there's this urgency. And don't worry, you're not gonna mess this up. There's nothing you can do to mess it up. There's nothing you have to do, <laughs> right? But you feel this, you feel this, you feel this inside of you. You know that there's something that you're here to do. And you've been looking around going like, what is it? Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, I know I'm here to do something, but what? Um, it's to speak. You are here to speak, right? And it doesn't need to be literal speaking. It can be writing, it can be painting, it could be dance, right? It doesn't need to be literal words, but you're here to share something. And whatever you're here to share, whatever you're here to do, it, it like, it is gonna wake others up. You are the horn that wakes the sleepers, okay? And you have been, <laughs> you haven't been a fool. <laughs> the fool is this new start, but you're gonna have to look at yourself differently. You're gonna have to like, look at yourself differently. Um, this fool, because you're in this new leveling up, you're gonna, um, <sighs> you might resist leveling up because leveling up means that you will now be the small fish in the big pond, right? Because you guys have already reached a certain level of self-actualization in your life and in your spiritual purpose. So you've kind of become like the big fish in the small pond, right? You're like a, like a, a grade 12 in high school, right? Or what do Americans call it? Like a senior in high school, right? You're in your last year of high school. <laughs> that's, that's what you've kind of been, right? The big fish in the little pond. Um, and now you're graduating. This is graduation day. You're leveling up and you're gonna go off to university and then you're gonna be a first year in university. Um, and now, what? It, it, it's awkward, right? That feeling of going off to university and being a first year is like so awkward because you were the big fish in the little pond and now you're the little fish in the big pond again, right? All over again and it's awkward. So that, just be aware of that, but just know, just remember, like, you know, your first day of high school, right? You got over that feeling of being the little fish and you learned a whole bunch and then you expanded. And so that's, that's, I feel like you guys might resist graduation because you might go, oh, you know, it's pretty comfortable here. It's pretty good here. I like it here. I like feeling like I have it together. I like feeling like I am an expert because you guys have expertise. I don't care what you do or what this is about for you. You are a master of your craft. You do have special unique knowledge and special unique talents and skills. Like you have got to graduation, right? You've got to the final, the final stage of one level of your spiritual journey. And it is massively time to level up and it is a step up into a leadership position. Step up into a leadership position. And this doesn't have to mean, you know, telling people what to do or even giving people information. I, I keep thinking of dancers. I don't, I don't know if somebody watching this is a dancer, but you know, you, your, whatever it is that you do, however you flow your energy out into the world, that's really what this is about. Flow your energy out into the world. Flow your perfect, authentic energy out in the world. Because I, I feel like, you know, maybe you've been working a day job and it's just a job that pays the bills, right? Maybe you're a waitress or a cashier, or maybe you work at a bank. Maybe you're, you're maybe you're a teacher and you hate teaching, right? You're just <laughs> you're just doing your job, um, and you're, you're it's like the thing that you do in your life. Okay, so how are you repressed, right? How have you repressed yourself? The thing that you do in your life, like that takes up all of your time, you know, if it, whether, so for a lot of people that's your job, but it also could be like your family situation if you're in a caregiver role. Um, and that's just really not who you are, right? You never wanted to be a caregiver, but you signed up. But like, you know, life happened and either you're taking care of older relatives or you're taking care of your children and you're like, this isn't really like my soul's purpose, right? As much as I love my family and as much as um, like, I want to be there for them. And of course, sometimes with family, you have no choice but to be the caregiver, right? It's like, that's, that's not the true expression of who you really are. Whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that takes up all of your time and energy, more, more importantly, it's your energy, right? You guys are going to be learning to balance, like figure out the difference between time and energy. A lot of the time as humans, we talk about, oh, I don't have enough time. Really what we mean is I don't have enough energy, right? <laughs> so the thing that is taking up all your, your energy, you've like allowed that to consume you to the point where you don't really get to be yourself very often. Maybe you only get to be yourself for a couple of hours a week. But I think for some of you, you might have not been truly yourself for like years <laughs> because you've gotten consumed by, you know, your human obligations. And that is what is shifting here. So 
put it out there to your guides, right? Put it out there to the universe. Be like, I need some guidance. Nudge me in the right direction. Show me the way. How do I adjust my life so that I can let my inner light shine forth so that I can be my true self? You know, maybe some of you can quit your jobs, right? Or start a side job and you can, you know, build from there. But some of you, you know, maybe you're stuck. Maybe you really are. Like, I don't think job is a bad example. I don't think anyone is ever really stuck in their job. Like, like if you like to just be real, like I've quit, I've quit jobs. I've had my husband. I've like, we've, we've both turned down like really well-paying good career jobs that we just like, we're like, no, I, I don't, I don't want to live like that. Right. So I think you can always turn down a job if you get really creative about it. Right. Like really creative. <laughs> But some of you, I think, might be stuck in like a family situation where maybe, you know, you got to wait till those kids graduate, right? But in the meantime, you can still adjust your life, right? You can still adjust your life. Maybe, you know, you've been saying, oh, you know, I, uh, I can't pursue my dreams or, oh, you know, I can't be my true self because, 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 because kids, because my parents, because my job, whatever, right? No, <laughs> you can, you absolutely can. It is part of your soul's journey. It is part of your life's plan. It will just take a little bit of creativity, a little bit of finesse. How can you carve out an hour for yourself every day? That, yeah, massive shivers there. Huge invitation. Like for those of you where you're like really just, you got too much other shit going on in your life, get like one hour a day. Get one hour a day where you do literally whatever. <laughs> where you do exactly what you want to do, where you just sit there and communicate with yourself or you go out and do whatever it is you want to do. It's like, remember who you really are. Remember who you really are and then start taking action as, as a light worker, as a spiritual leader, as the way shower, right? You guys are way showers. Then, then the project, whatever your project is, whether it's an artistic project, whether it's a business project, whether it's like learning um, healing or any kind of psychic reading or anything, whatever it is you want to do, whatever your thing is, right? The project will grow out of your own passion. So you don't, don't, um, don't put the, you know, carriage before the horse or whatever, right? You don't start thinking, oh, what is my, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What is my mission? What is my purpose? Don't think about that yet. Just first find out who are you? Like what color is your light? How does it shine? How does it vibrate? What does your soul feel like? Right? What is your passion? What is your passion? What truly, truly, truly draws you in every day? Every day when you have that one hour to yourself, what is your passion? What is it? And then, you know, this light worker mission, if you want to call it that, <laughs> it will grow from your passion. It, it, your light worker mission will never feel like a job, will never feel like a chore. It will feel like a natural outgrowth of your passion that allows you to do your passion. So find yourself first, find your passion first, and then grow into your spiritual leadership from there. <laughs> so I think I'm going to leave you guys there. I love you guys. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to everybody who picked the Wildwood Tarot. I'm getting a different vibe on this. First of all, uh, I had to actually blow the dust off this box. I love, love, love this deck. It's one of my favorites, but I haven't used it in a while. And um, I get a ton of Virgo energy from this. It's it's funny. I, I typically use it a lot in Virgo season or in Pisces season, which is the opposite of Virgo. It's like, I don't know why I'm talking about that. Maybe somebody needed to hear Virgo. <laughs> There's something grounded and quiet and still about your energy. The image I'm getting is water being poured through a funnel, water being poured through a funnel and like going to ground, going to ground, you know, Virgo's earth energy, obviously wildwood tarot, you know, this is all about the ancient forest, lots of earth energy here. root chakra, lower chakra stuff. Okay, how have you been repressing yourself? Queen of bows, the hair, so it's the queen of wands. Interesting. Let me get some more cards. The seer, that would be the high priestess. 
looking into the looking glass. And the Ten of Stones, home. Five of bows. And the eel card. And at the bottom of the deck, your ten of, just the ten, the wheel. Okay. Um. I'm just taking a minute to gather my thoughts because this is a little bit difficult to articulate and it is very different than the first two. Because they were all throat chakra and those might also apply to you if you happen to watch two decks, but this is like an entirely separate thing. <laughs> you have been keeping yourself out of your body, whether you knew it or not. Whether you knew it or not, you've been up in your up in your mind, but it's like up in your fire, up in, up in your fire. You've been up in your fire, which is weird, right? Um, I'm saying that because of this queen of bows, this hair. <sighs> Just think about hair, right? Extremely fast, very secretive, almost impossible to see. And it's this bows, which is fire energy, right? She'd be the queen of wands. It's like you were keeping yourself in a state of distraction, like keeping yourself worked up, keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself busy, busy, keeping yourself productive. Um, like I get, I get such a feeling of busyness and of fire coming off of this. It's like you were very fiery. You were very busy. Um, I don't know. If like some of you like worked a lot or if some of you were just always like, go, 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 like constantly doing and maybe even priding yourself on that, priding yourself on how productive you are, but how much you get done about how well you manage your time, um, about how you, you know, have an idea and you act on it right away. Those are all good. Those are all good, good qualities, right? But it's time for like a shift, right? <laughs> the wheel is turning. The wheel is turning. It is time for your energy to shift. And I'm like, I'm feeling that so much with this because that energy, that, that, um, image I was getting of like water flowing into a funnel. It's like here, here you are coming down to earth, coming into your body to look, to look down at the looking glass, right? Um, I feel like there's a little bit of what might be a tough lesson here um, where you are going through this phase where you have to admit that working hard, working a lot, being constantly busy, being constantly productive, constantly being go, 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 constantly like being very, I don't know what the word is, like willful, like being very fiery, you know, that fiery spirit. that way of being isn't necessarily going to serve you moving forward because it is time for you to have to like really calm down to like slow down slow slow down stop doing stop doing <laughs> you are here to self-reflect right y you have you've and that's i think the problem <sighs> there's something inside of yourself that you don't want to see, that you're afraid of seeing, um, that you don't like, that scares you, or that you just think is bad, or something you feel shame about. There's, you know, going to be different for everybody what your thing is, but this could be, you know, childhood trauma, past life trauma, anything that made you feel so bad that you were just like, I'm just never going to think about that again, <laughs> right? Um, and it, you don't need to have a specific event. If there's no specific event that you remember, you know, this could be a repressed memory. It could be a past life memory, whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is that there's something deep inside of you that you don't, that you don't want to look at that, that, you know, that, you know, maybe even as a child, you decided that you don't want to look at it. You were just like, no. And so for your, <clears throat> your whole life up to this point, you've been keeping yourself busy. You've been keeping yourself going. Um, because that, 
by focusing on the world around you and by constantly being go, 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 you didn't have to self-reflect. You didn't have to go inward. But this this is this is the moment to go inward. This is it. Um, it's like before you rise up, you need to like go through yourself. Like, like imagine that the circle here, my hand is, you know, your heart. You have to literally travel through your own heart and then you can rise. You're looping through your own heart. There's something you need to see about yourself. Um, I can't tell you what that specifically is, right? You're, you're gonna have to get very quiet, very still. Like, and quite specifically, no one can tell you this. Like you, you could, I mean, you can get readings, you know, you can talk to people, you can hash it out and people will give you all kinds of ideas and a lot of that might resonate, but at the end of the day, your thing here is that you're gonna have to see something about yourself and you're gonna have to see it by yourself. So, you know, <laughs> get a glass of wine, sit in your chair by the window and like look at your reflection in the mirror and really admit to yourself what it is that you never wanted to admit. And, you know, this this could be like a, like, Oh, it's so, it's so tough, right? Because the, the nice way for me to put this, <clears throat> sorry, now I, now I don't want to talk, right? <laughs> my, my like throat is like literally closing up. <laughs> had to take a drink. So it's, it's hard for me to talk about this because the easy way out, the easy way out on this would, would be for me and for you to say that this is all because of something somebody did to you, right? That's the easy, that's the nice way out. Then, Cause then I can say, oh, it's not your fault somebody did this to you and you're a victim, right? But even that, like, that's not good. We don't want to be in this victim mentality all the time, right? We don't, I don't want to say that you're the victim. I don't want to put you in victim mentality and you don't want to stay in victim mentality, right? You want to empower yourself. <clears throat> Look at this, five of bows, empowerment, self-empowerment, be the archer, right? So this is something to do here also about like getting yourself out of victim mentality um, with, the, with this queen of bows, it's a little bit like running around, always running away, always running away. But it's like you guys were like a pinball. I can see you guys pinballing around, like from one thing, maybe from one relationship to another, from one job to another, from one place to another, or just constantly bouncing around, keeping yourself busy and distracted so that you didn't have to look inside. But so I don't really think that this is specifically about the wound that somebody else gave you, right? Of course, you have those wounds and you have those traumas, but that's not the focus of this particular reading, right? That's for some other reading. This particular reading about how have you repressed yourself and how can you liberate yourself, right? So you have repressed yourself by, first of all, it all started with victim mentality, right? Thinking that everything is always done to you and that you are the victim and that, you know, little old you sitting there being innocent and then people just come and dump on you right um but it, it's time to shake that off to to empower yourself and know that we always have a choice moving forward about how we're going to like rise above right how we're going to rise above the other thing about this is like i was saying it is having to see inside of you and for some of you you might have to acknowledge something that you did to somebody else or something that you just did to yourself, right? This could be, for some of you, um, that thing you feel guilty about. What did you do that you feel guilty about? Is there a thing that you, keeps you up at night or that you just try really hard not to think about if you're feeling guilt? Um, in which case, you know, you might need to take steps to work through that and release the guilt because you don't deserve to feel guilty. Your higher self doesn't want you to feel guilty. Um, and y you know, whatever you feel guilty about, there might not be a good reason to feel guilty about it. That might be like un unfair guilt, right? It might be unfair guilt. That's in, which is why you need to look at it to release the guilt. Um, for some of you, this could be shame, right? Something happened and you feel ashamed of it. Shame is like one of the lowest frequency emotions. You gotta, you gotta admit that, but it, whatever you feel shame for, you're gonna have to look at, right? Before you can release it. The shame will not go away if you don't look at the thing you feel ashamed about. So, you know, if it could be a memory you have to go through, it could be a habit um, or just something you need to acknowledge about yourself. It's like, finally, really, really look at, look at, look at it straight in the eye, acknowledge it, say, I see you. I know you are there. I know you are inside of me. I know you are a part of me. I see you. 
Now we're going to resolve you because I don't need to feel shame about this for the rest of my life, right? Um, and, you know, this is a process that you're going to go through. It's going to take, you know, days, weeks, whatever of working through and releasing releasing it but it's like send it down to the earth right this is this is so grounding because you're being pulled into your body right your lower chakras are damaged this is like root chakra stuff um but also sacral chakra for a lot of you right all the lower chakras are pretty intertwined um yeah and you know we got this eel here and he's supposed to be the knight of cups which is a really good card but honestly this eel just kind of creeps me out <laughs> it makes me think of sacral chakra trauma right so if you've got eels, if you got an eel, you know, get rid of the eel. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the earth, right? Mother Gaia herself, your body, um, animal spirits, right? Trees, like getting getting in your body is going to help you with this. Like um, the, I, I feel more that you're being guided to go down, to go down, to get into your body, to get grounded and to connect with like earth-based spirituality. Um, you guys, you know, I feel like you might have often gone upwards and out. It's like, get out of my body, get out of my, get out of the earth, send everything up and out, send everything up and out, right? Um, and because of some of the things you've been through, you know, you've kept yourself out of your body. You've kept yourself out because maybe being in your body was too damaging, right? And so the real root, like the real problem here is that you're not in your body. You're out of your body. Even though you walk around, you live your whole life, right? You're not in your body. <laughs> How often do you actually just like physically like, look at the stuff around you. And I know this is going to sound crazy, <laughs> but I've had so many like epiphanies in my life where I went, wow, I went an entire day. I like walked around, I got groceries. I like walked my dog, you know, I did stuff. I went into the world, but I never actually looked at anything like around me. Like I, I'm, cause I'm not very in my body either. Right. I'm always, um, thinking about stuff. I, I imagine things and I think about them and I'm up in the cloud, up in my head all the time. And I almost never unless they make a deliberate point of it, to come into my body, to like come down into my body and actually look, actually look at what I'm doing. Um, it's really funny, like, you know, I can't high, f high five people. I always like mess up the high five. And uh, I remember I had this epiphany when somebody looked at me and was like, Shyla, you have to actually look at the person's hand when you're going to give them a high five. And I was like, what? It never even occurred to me to actually look at the hand, right? So then I've, I've been practicing giving high fives. And now I know if you look at the other person's hand and you high five, the hand, your hand magically goes. You, you can't miss. If you're looking at the hand, you actually pull it off. I never actually, in all of my years trying to high five people, I never actually looked at their hand when I was trying to hit their hand. I would just be like in my head going, oh God, now it's awkward and I have to high five. Do they want to high five me? Well, I'm going to miss. I'm going to hit their elbow. Everyone's going to laugh at me. It's going to be stupid, right? I never, I was never in my body. So like literally picking up a practice of actually looking, like actually look, you know, pick something up and just stare at it. Look at it. Just look at it. Look at your hand. You can always look at your hand. Literally get in your body because you guys are very out of your body and that is like preventing you from life, <laughs> you know? Um, I think you guys have, some of you have had like many, many life experiences. Like you've had, you could probably write, write a book, right? About your crazy life experiences, many adventures, right? But it's like you weren't really fully there for it because you were kind of hovering above your body, out of your body. So... <sighs> the thing that is stopping you from getting fully into your body is those lower chakra traumas, right? Um, and there's probably a ton that could be said <laughs> for each and every one of you about what's going on with your lower chakras and what kind of traumas are, are hiding there and what kind of energy work you could do to work on that. But for this reading, for right now, the focus is on something that you don't want to admit about yourself, something you don't want to admit about yourself, something you that something that brings you either shame or guilt or just like self-loathing, that feeling of like, I can't believe I'm actually like that. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's just a private personal conversation between you and yourself. Right. And it's just something for you to see and for you to look at and whatever it is, I promise you, it's not as bad as you think it is. Right. We just, we're so hard on yourselves. You guys are so hard on yourself. You've, you've been so hard on yourself that you've like prevented yourself from merging fully with your body. Right. Um, and it might help for you to just really realize that 
everybody else is the same way. We're, we're, this could apply to almost anybody, right? We're, we're all like this. We all have these stupid things about ourselves that we just, that just plague us for our, our entire lives. And everybody, everybody at some point in their life, usually multiple times, right? Have these like, my husband always calls them a come to Jesus moments. It's your come to Jesus moment where you kind of, you know, you hit, you hit the wall, right? You just run face first into the wall and you wake up days and you go, okay, I need to admit something about myself. I need to admit something about my life. And then you make the changes moving from there. So this is like, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're, you're, you're not any worse than anybody else. Literally every single human that has ever lived has gone through something like this. We've all had to have these moments and we will all have them again, right? This is just part of the process. So just really, really, really please, please, please take any ideas that you have in your head about you being somehow worse than other people or that they're somehow don't have these problems. Just get rid of all those ideas because they're not true, right? You are like in the same boat as everybody else. We all are like this. So, and you will be liberated when you fully come home. And to me, this is coming home into your body and into the earth, right? Getting completely earthed, coming way, way down to earth. Some of you have like never even been, <laughs> it's like you've been, even though you've had this body walking around on earth, you've never really been to earth. It's like, you've. that's how disconnected from your body you've been. So you're coming down. It's almost like you're birthing yourself into your own body. So life experiences are going to bring you into your body. Um, you know, even if you, if you struggle, um, any like physical illnesses or accidents or injuries, even that brings you into your body because you know what? Pain, pain is grounding. Pain puts you in your body. You want to connect to your body. If you're out of touch with your body, your body in extremis, like if this, if this goes on to the, the point where your, your, your soul and your body like aren't communicating at all, your body will manifest pain to get you into your body, right? To make you pay attention to it. So talk to your body. What does your body want? What does your body need? Um, and then like talk to the earth, like really get connected with Gaia, whatever kind of grounding you like to do is perfect. Um, but for, for you guys, uh, really, um, you know, maybe you already do grounding meditations, you know, where you imagine yourself grounding into the center of the earth and you have conversations with Gaia there. Beautiful. Perfect. Um, but since you guys are like really working on getting into your body and healing your root chakra, um, I, there's a big invitation here, you know, to actually physically do something in your body. This, this, this message came up for another deck as well. So this is, I think a pretty common theme. Um, in fact, this is a theme for all of 2022 and beyond. It's part of the North Node in Taurus. We are all grounding, like next level grounding. That is like consciousness is grounding in a new way on earth right now. Um, and so you're part of that. This is all part of this. So this, I, to help you in your understanding that this isn't just you, that this is like, don't feel bad about yourself, right? This is part of a bigger picture. This is also part of literally how consciousness itself is grounding into the earth and manifesting on the earth plane right now. So this is all part of a huge, big thing. It's not just you, I promise. Um, so physically do something in your body that makes you feel grounded. If it's swimming, if it's putting your feet in water, if it's walking in the dirt, you know, like actually getting outside, like hugging a tree, playing with a dog, whatever. Um, like going to the zoo, even for some of you, <laughs> um, something that gets you outside connecting with nature physically, physically. Cause, cause that's the thing, right? If you, I feel like you guys, maybe you were used to doing most of your healing and your energy work in like an abstract way, which is perfect and beautiful. And I love it. Um, and is necessary, but you know, at some point, if you want to heal your body, you need to like do something with your body, right? If you want to be in your body, you have to do something with your body. So doing energy work on your root chakra, I absolutely recommend, but I also recommend like doing something physically like exercise, but it should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should make you excited. So anything that, that gets you moving with your body, anything that gets you connected with your body and anything that gets you connected with the earth, plants, animals, anything, do that because that will bring you home, right? Your home is here. Your home is here. Your home is here on earth. I know so many of you are, you know, homesick, homesick star seeds, right? Um, earth angels, right? You don't feel safe here. You don't like it here. You want to go home, but your life's journey is to know that your home is here. Your home is here. This is home. This is everywhere is home. Everywhere in the entire universe is home. Where your soul is, is home. There's no way for you to not be home. Home is everywhere. Home is here. Home is your body. In this life, your home is your body and your body is on earth. So 
You're coming home because you already are home. You have been home the whole time. You've never been away. So fully becoming human <laughs> without losing anything. And that's another thing. You're not going to lose whatever you're worried about losing. You're not losing anything. You're gaining the human experience. You're gaining the human experience. <sighs> yes, I think that's it for you guys. I'm going to leave you there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.